Okay, so this series is going to demonstrate how to make a jigsaw puzzle. Now one of the big decisions you have to make is at the very beginning, and that is are you going to have the uh, image or images broke up into their individual pieces before bringing them into Unity, or have Unity break them up for you? Unity can very easily break up a sim single image into a bunch of little images, but it's going to do so with flat sides, whereas with jigsaw puzzles they tend to have uh, protrusions and indentations, and you would have to do that outside of Unity with a third-party program. I'm not going to demonstrate any of those because it all depends what method you want to use. It's just a matter of searching for the one that works for you. I will demonstrate how to break it up in Unity. So you take, uh, you click on the image that you're going to use for the puzzle pieces, and up here where you see sprite mode, choose multiple. What this is going to let you do is going to let you edit the image. So if you click on sprite editor, click on apply because I changed the um, sprite mode. Now what you can do is you go up here to slice. and you can choose uh, grid by cell count okay and you can see say how many columns and rows you want say you want five columns and five rows and you slice you'll automatically break it up into that many pieces for you and then you click on apply you can close that now what happens is if you click on the little arrow next to this, up to this point in any demo, if you clicked on the object, you really just saw the object again. But now, you see the individual pieces that you've split it into. And what this lets you do is you can drag and drop these individual images onto the puzzle piece objects. So let's make a couple puzzle piece objects. So game object, and we'll create empty. We'll just call it a1, so typical grid labeling system. So we click on A1, click on Add Component, and we'll choose Rendering, and we'll choose Sprite Renderer. Just drag and drop that upper left corner right there. Now where you're moving it at the moment doesn't matter, I'm just trying to get it out of the center there so it's not being blocked by the camera image. One of the things that we're going to eventually add is we're going to add a scrollable inventory to the side. I'm not going to do that right now, we're just going to have these things kind of piled up on the side for now. Now to make this work, another big decision you have to make is do you want to have the pieces be placed based on location or based on collision? And once again, there is a trade-off. If you want to do it on collision, you have to make a corresponding space, uh, uh, basically a socket object. So for every puzzle piece, you have to have a corresponding socket for that piece to collide with and be placed on. So you create a lot of extra objects. But it's very easy for the coding. The other option you can do, instead of based on collision, what you can do is you can look at the pieces XY coordinates and when you get into the right XY coordinates and you say okay place here if it's within a certain range within a certain tolerance it places it so as a quick recap you can either have the the piece placed based on collision with a socket or if you don't want to add all the sockets you can just have it be based on location um, entirely your decision how you want to do it um, like I said, there's trade-offs to both of them. Now, let's see just how easy it is to have this fall into a socket. So, add component, physics 2D, box collider. Whoops, sorry, I said one thing but did another. Box collider. And it's hard to see, but there's actually a green border surrounding the object, the image. Now, what we do is we need to have this be movable with the mouse. So again, we're going to eventually have multiple pieces, but for now, we're just going to uh, uh, have one piece 
just to get the basics. And honestly, once you see one piece going to one socket, that's really just about it. I'll do more than that just so you can see it, but it's at that point it's just rinse and repeat that same functionality. So right click create C sharp script and we'll call this move piece. We'll double click on that. Zoom in a little bit. Actually, you can close those. Those are from a previous project. I'm going to go to a text file. I'm going to do a little copy and paste, but then I'll explain it. Because I don't want to make any mistakes when I'm uh, typing this in. So basically, this script is going to be attached to every single piece. Okay. Now what we need to do is we need to transfer the mouse motion to the piece. So what we do is in the update section, since the update section is performed, as it says, with every frame, once per frame, we're going to drop the code right in here. So let's take a look at what we just did. Vector 2, so it's an XY coordinate, Vector 2 mouse position. So we've just created a variable that has an X and Y coordinate baked into it. What we're saying is we want to change that to a new vector 2, input dot, dot mouse pointer uh, mouse position dot X, input dot mouse position dot Y. That's pretty straightforward. It's saying, okay, give us the uh, X and Y position of the mouse and drop it into this variable. Now let's take that variable and do something else with it. We put it over here. And we filter it through this camera dot main dot screen to world point mouse position. Basically, Unity has what it, it calls Unity units, and what this is doing is this is converting the mouse position into those units. So first, we take the mouse position and drop it into a variable. We take that variable, filter it through that, and drop that into this new variable, vector two object position. And now, last but not least. This you've seen before, if you've seen any of my videos, transform.position equals object position. So we took the mouse locations, dropped it into mouse position, took mouse position, filtered it, and dropped it into object position. Now we take an object position and saying apply that to the position of whatever the script is attached to. So whenever you see transform.position, it's, uh, it's applying this value to whatever object the script is attached to. The script is about to be attached to the puzzle piece and so it will uh, position the puzzle piece based on the mouse movement. Now, this is obviously placeholder because uh, while this functionality is good, if this is going to be attached to every puzzle piece then that means technically every puzzle piece is going to be moving. So we're going to have to put a little condition in here. But I just want you to get the basics. So we'll save that. We'll click on the puzzle piece. And don't mind the warning down here. This is for another uh, uh, demonstration that's in this project. Put the puzzle piece on it. And now when we move the, we move the mouse, the piece should move. That easy to transfer mouse movement to an object. Now, let's create our first socket. So game object, create empty, and we're going to name it the same thing, which is absolutely not a problem in this case. You can name objects the same thing, the same, with the same name. But like if, for instance, if you're cloning a bunch of enemies, uh, you won't notice because the game is running, but they'll all have the same name more than likely. Unless you actually put something in there, coding in there to change the name, uh, every time you clone an object, they'll have the same name. So it's okay to have multiple objects with the same name. It's just that as a designer could potentially confuse you on what you're trying to do. In this case, it's exactly what we want. So let's slide that puzzle piece over. Let's take our socket and move it up. And you'll see in just a minute why it's essential to give it exactly the same name. So add component, physics, 2D, box collider. Now let's also make both of these triggers while we're at it. 
because we don't want them to collide like two cars. We want them to overlap, like stepping on a trap door. And there's one more thing we have to add to the puzzle piece. Add component, physics 2D, rigid body 2D, get rid of the gravity scale, and that's going to be necessary for the actual placement. So let's go back into the script now for move piece. And outside of start, outside of update, we're going to add a void on trigger enter 2D. And this is what's going to look for collision. So I'm going to paste it in here, but then we'll explain it. So void on trigger enter 2D, because as we said, these are both set as triggers. On trigger enter 2D, collider 2D other. This is a predefined routine, so it's case sensitive. O, T, E, D all need to be capitalized. Now this is why the name of the socket has to exactly match the name of the corresponding piece because it makes the code very simple. Rather than having to say if object name is A1 and socket is A1, then they fit together. Or object name is A2 and socket name is A2, they fit together. Instead, you can just do a single command that says if the name of the other object that the piece is colliding with is the same as the name of the object that this script is attached to, which is the piece, then go ahead and do something. So if other.gameObject.name, so that, that give that brings you the name of whatever the, the piece is being collided with, if it's equal to the game piece name, and the reason why this is returning the name of the piece, the puzzle piece, is because that's what this script is attached to. Then go ahead, transform.position is equal to other.gameObject.transform.position. So again, we're we're leaning on this. We're leaning on the fact that we've detected a collision with an other object, and what we want to do is we want to have the position, uh, we want to grab that position of the object and transform it to the position that this script is attached to, or the object that this script is attached to. So, basically what we then do is, as I mentioned, this is placeholder, once you've locked it into position, you don't want it to keep moving. So we have to add a status variable. And we're going to build on this as far as the different statuses um, a piece can have. So public string and call it piece status. And it's essential that this is not static. Because this script string, uh, excuse me, this script is going to be attached to however many pieces you want. Each piece needs its own piece status variable. So if you attach this to 50 pieces, each one is going to have their own piece status. So you don't want it to be static. And we just drop that right in here. That piece status gets set to, for now we'll call it locked, maybe we'll find something more appropriate later. And then up here we say don't move anymore if it's locked. So if piece, oops, if piece status is not equal to locked. save it. Okay, so a quick recap. We created a new status to track piece, uh, a new variable to track piece status. We now say, okay, only move the piece if it's not locked, and we're going to have to build on, on that later to make sure it's only moving the, the one piece at a time. We've now checked for a collision. If the name of the object that is being collided with is the name of the piece, that this script is attached to, which you're moving around, then go ahead and take the position of the um, uh, socket, the other object, and apply it to the, the position of the piece. So, uh, and then change the status to lock, that way this stops occurring. And that should do it.
So that um, socket should be right above here, so we should see this Sony jump into place, just like that. And now it's no longer moving. Absolutely perfect. So that is basically uh, the, the heart of a game like this, is the ability to have it detect the right socket in the right piece. So let's quickly just grab A1, we'll copy it, we'll paste it, and like I said, the name has to match the socket, and we don't want this to be the name of the socket. So we'll make this um, A2 because it'll be the next socket over. We slide it over. So there's A1, there's A2, and you'll see that it won't socket to that position. See, it's right here and it jumped over when I touched that one. So just to demonstrate it, we'll move it over a little bit more. Make a little bit more of it. See, it is not moving, and then it does move. So that's why it's essential to have those pieces. Uh, uh, the pieces and the socket names match. Okay, so that's uh, that should be it for this video then.